into a room and it had to be a, a full living room. They had to do it in probably 15 minutes. Wow. wow. It was just, and it, was, you know, it was stand back. Don't get, don't get in that way. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if the folks can understand the devastation if you weren't part of it, if you didn't experience it. I mean, you saw it on the news, you saw it on TV, and it's almost like a, a, a snapshot when you watch it on TV. I know the, the coverage lingered for a few weeks, but, you know, if you look now on TV, it's pretty much gone. But right. people are still living with these conditions. And, and I'm just going to do a quick shout-out to my friend Mike Katz, who um, is a, 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 another story because he's a guy who paid his flood insurance on time and got, you know, a different settlement and now he's a very handy guy so he's doing a lot of the work himself and he's, he's seen to it that the work gets done. But a lot of folks don't have that initiative. They don't have the help to be able to do it. He's not able to lay tile so he has a friend of his that's going to come and, and help him lay, you know, tile because he's got knee problems. But other than that, he's very hands-on and he's, he, you know, he's He's watched every dollar, and, you know, a lot of folks don't, uh, it's either they don't have the, the, the wherewithal, or they didn't have the insurance covered, um, or they, you know, they didn't get a good settlement, or they just didn't have the means to be able to rebuild. And well, you know, keep one thing in mind, a lot of folks, not only in Freeport, but throughout the South Shore of Long Island, mm -hmm. a lot of folks just recovered, or were almost recovered, mm -hmm. from the last storm. From my read. For my read. Mm -hmm. So if they spent the money they had in the bank, or they they have you know they've done as much as they can. Here, you know, just a little over a year later, they it hit again, and now especially with the economy, in a much bigger way too. You know, now they don't have that that bank hole behind them, or, or you know, the, the available credit to go and and get. Mm -hmm. You know, now keep in mind, a lot of people not only they lose their house. They lost their cars. You know, they thought they would move them to what would normally be safe area. Sure. For what, what was normally a safe area is not a safe area anymore. What do you mean not safe, though? Well, <clears throat> normally what happens in, in the village of Freeport, people would move their cars to Atlantic Avenue. If you were south of Atlantic Avenue, the, the, uh, the, the, the area that could put your car so it was safe would be up around Atlantic Avenue. Okay. Now, in many places, we had water up to Merrick Road. Right. How do these two and three blocks? North of Atlantic Avenue, have two and three feet of water in their basement. Well, even that's worse. Than that. Like, that sounds it, like down by me too, many. If you know the topography of Freeport, you know we have friends of ours, uh, mutual friends of ours, Rich uh, Tina, for example, um, all the way up on you know by tri Triangle Place, which is very close to Merrick Road, and right. then there's a waterway out in that area there that uh, was affected, it, that you know runs north south, and that even affected the Coral House, which is a huge catering hall. Right. Yep. Yep, they, they are, sure. So, you know, and, and it's just, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible thing what, what, uh, you know, what Mother Nature dealt us uh, to show us that Mother Nature is still in charge. Absolutely. Uh, you know, what happened in, in the course of, one, you know, one 24 hour period is going to affect people for years to come. So true. It's, it's not a quick fix. You know, I, every week I say, I say the same thing. I'd love to say this is the last house we did, but in reality, I'll see you guys next weekend. Well, you know what? The whole uh, you know bad experience that everybody had, look what came out of it. And now you have the Friends of Freeport, which you are a big, integral part of. We, as the community, want to thank you very much, Rich Cantwell, first of all, for being uh, available to do this interview. I know that you don't like to do a lot of the press interviews, and I know that you have been seeked out by uh, some of the major uh, press uh, and you even and uh, succumbed to a couple of those interviews. I saw them uh, as they were happening. And, uh, you know, you were kind of blindsided by that. So we want to thank you for coming on my show because, again, you are, uh, you know, being very selective as to who you speak to and uh, and what goes on. And you're in, a, you're in a funny position now. All of a sudden, now you got to, you know, you got to deal with this grant money and you got to deal with who gets fixed and when. And, uh, you know, people, are, you know, uh, always want to see what you're up to and what you're doing so you put yourself well, we, in a position yeah, we, we are very fortunate and the people that we are working with uh, are are very very powerful yes, thank you to all of them as well all the volunteers they, they really help us out uh, again the board of directors that, that are with friends of freeport really uh you know they're, they're a lot smarter than i am number one well and we I have, have to thank, uh, uh, go ahead. 
I'm sorry. Go no, go ahead. I just wanted to say we got Barry right behind you, but uh, we wanted to make sure that people know how they can find out information about Friends of Freeport. So that if you have a Friends of Freeport Facebook page or something like so, that. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's very important to us. So our Facebook page is Friends of Freeport and Wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, our website is www.friendsoffreeportny.org. I think it's lowercase. Nice. Um, you know, we, uh, look, we have, uh, as the saying goes, to, to, to support ourselves, we have a DVD that we put together. The DVD show, it's about 15 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. It's set to music. It shows Freeport before the storm. It shows Freeport as the storm was happening. It shows Freeport immediately, I mean, in the, the hours and days after the storm. And then it shows the rebuilding process. It's, it's, if you know Freeport, it's a, it's hard to watch. Very powerful. Hey, I got a hookup for you. Yeah. What, is, what happened with all the displaced cats that happened during the storm? Because we got two ladies that just left that can hook you up, even in Freeport. I bet you they could. We, they could. we have a couple of, uh, there's a couple of organizations in Freeport. One of them is called Bobby and the Strays. Mm-hmm. And they are the old Humane Society mm-hmm. uh, down in Freeport. They're in that old building. And do they, they do duo like, as well, Bobby and the Strays? You sure it's not Josie and the Pussycat? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they do an outstanding, outstanding job with all the uh, displaced animals and 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 uh, whatever. There's also a couple of people. Debbie Wilson comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, she took in, I have, I want to say, 10 or 15 animals over the course of a couple of days, wow. feeding them and wow. caring for them. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's just not... There's a lot of people involved. It's deep. A lot of people. Very it's deep. deep. Fifteen animals. That house must have stunk. It's deep. And you know what? I feel for you, Rich Carwell. Thank you very much for what you do, what you're doing for the village, for society. You're an inspiration. You're teaching people, even here in Huntington County, that uh, you know, in case a disaster strikes, you know, this is the way to do it, folks. You get people together. You become a 501c3. You get a board, and you go out and you fix people's homes, and you help people and volunteer. And that's what Rich and the friends of Freeport been doing and we're gonna have Barry on here as well too Rich so thanks for coming on you got any words for Barry anything I should say to Barry after I read my community bulletin boards <laughs> well I just want to I'm hoping he's gonna have uh, I hear there's a brownie bake off for uh, next <laughs> so I started that and I, brownie, brownie bake off. I, I really shouldn't have started that but yeah, you know I, what? Volunteer, I volunteer to be a judge <laughs> <laughs> you know what Barry is a is an awesome soul and a great guy and a gourmet and we're gonna talk to him about that and thanks so much for taking the time out to uh, do the interview, Rich. We really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. And then, uh, you know, anytime you get a chance, come on down to, uh, come on back home. I'm going to uh, come out there and do some remote interviews and take some pictures and stuff. Absolutely, big guy. Excellent. Thank you. All right, buddy, you take care. You got it. All right, bye-bye. That's Rich Cantwell with the Friends of Freeport. We're going to have Barry Goodman in just a couple of minutes, but right now from the WDVR Community Bulletin Board, we want to uh, read real quick um, that the Surgeonsville Volunteer Fire Company is hosting a dinner dance at the firehouse right here in Delaware Township on April 13th. The dinner dance is to benefit Huntington County's Project Lifesaver, which we talked about right here in studio with the folks from the Surgeonsville Volunteer your fire department. We had Michelle in here, Michelle Lettering, and he's uh, spearheading that project, Project Lifesaver, and that provides a free service to track and locate uh, sufferers of autism, Alzheimer's, dementia, Down syndrome, etc. And uh, the tickets are only $30 per person, and uh, there's going to be a Chinese auction at the event as well. So you can support by buying tickets, donating, gifting to the auction, or even fixing a dessert. You can contact Sheriff Sandy Ford at 908-806-5183 for more information. And don't spend Easter in the kitchen cooking. This is another CBB, by the way, and it's kind of related because it's a uh, firefighter theme. So let a firefighter at the Plumstead Volunteer Fire Company take the heat in the kitchen. Easter dinners are available for takeout, only $10.50 a person, and that includes pineapple glazed ham, scallop potatoes, green beans, fresh Fresh fruit salad, dinner roll, and chocolate or lemon cream pie. Yum. Orders may be placed by March 25th. That's today, so get right on it. Dinners to be picked up on Saturday, this Saturday, March 30th, 9 a.m. to noon, or Easter Sunday, March 31st, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So you got a little window of opportunity there to get that done today. All you have to do is warm it and put it on the table. No one needs to know anything about who did the cooking and all the 
profits do go to the Plumstead Volunteer Fire Company. They are located at 5064 Stump Road in Plumsteadville, PA, 215-766-8250. Okay, and on the line right now, we have Barry Goodman, but you know what? I think I just cut him off. Barry, I just cut you off. <laughs> we're going to have to have you call back after the bottom of the hour anyway, and we're going to uh, finish up with Barry. We're going to talk a little bit about Friends of Freeport, a little bit about his gourmet beef stew, and we're going to talk about some of the upcoming fundraising activities that we're going to have right here at WDBR-FM, and Barry is a big part of that. He's going to tell us why. He's a radio activist. He was here in this very studio just a few weeks ago doing DJ for an hour, and he's going to talk to you about that as well. So keep it right here. We'll have some uh, great conversation with Barry Goodman coming up after these words and then Paul the Planet as well. Bizzle Bandwagon is a complete natural foods market. Open daily, they offer natural and organic groceries, body care items, herbs, certified produce, a natural cafe, an organic juice bar, with take-home meals and even catering for special events. Located in the Flemington Circle Shopping Center, Route 202 31. The number is 908 788 5737. And online at basilbandwagon.com. WDVR appreciates Basil Bandwagon's support. made possible by Marvin Windows and Doors and Kinsman Brothers, the oldest lumber yard in America. Kinsman Brothers specializes in the sale of handcrafted and designed Marvin Windows and Doors, custom built with care to individual specifications. Located on Route 32 and Old Carversville Road in Lumberville, Pennsylvania, their phone number is 215-297-5100. Kinsman Brothers and Marvin Windows and Doors, providing a clear reflection of support for non-commercial community radio. Winding its way beneath towering cliffs, the Snake River flows through the harsh desert environment near Boise, Idaho. The region is a popular nesting ground for a bird of prey known as the prairie falcon. I'm Jim Metzger, and this is the pulse of the planet. Prairie falcons are one of several species of raptors that make their home in the Snake River Birds of Prey Sanctuary. Sightings of falcons draw eager onlookers from around the world. Here comes the prairie falcon right now. He's he's coursing right below the canyon about 150 feet. Now he's going to go out over the river. He really shines when he gets over that water. Now he's going to turn. Sun's kind of banking off his wings. It's a good day to watch falcons. The prairie falcon can reach speeds in excess of 150 miles an hour as it dives to capture its favorite prey, ground squirrels. Bruce Hawk is with the Idaho Department of Fish and Game. They use these updrafts from this canyon wall to save energy. These falcons use the, the lift that these winds provide and also the thermal energy because when you know, this country gets really hot in the spring and summer and they can uh, actually soar up on these wind currents to thousands of feet high and go out to foraging areas and expend essentially no energy in soaring out to these ground squirrel colonies. We can go into high-speed dives and sneak attack the ground squirrels from great heights and basically in an unsuspecting position. About a hundred pairs of prairie falcons use the sanctuary's 82 miles of river canyon with its many cracks and crevices to nest and feed their ravenous young. To hear about our new CD, please visit PulsePlanet.com. Pulse on the Planet is made possible by the National Science Foundation. I'm Jim Metzner. presents 
Jish Zimmerman in a solo gospel performance on Sunday, April 14th from 3 until 5 in the afternoon. Tish returns to Surgeonsville to sing her favorite gospel music for a heartfelt afternoon of praise. There's no admission, but donations to WDVR are welcome. Light refreshments will be provided. That's Sunday, April 14th at 3 p.m. to hear Tish Zimmerman sing her favorite gospel songs at the Virginia Naparano Cultural Arts Center, 522 Rosemont Ringo's Road, Surgeonsville, New Jersey. For more information, call 609-397-5991. WDVR-FM, 89.7 Delaware Township, New Jersey, Translator Station, W220AG, 91.9 Lawrenceville, New Jersey, and WPNJ, 90.5 Eastern Pennsylvania, the best little radio station in all of Delaware Valley. <laughs> and we got Barry Goodman on the line. What do you say about the Laverne and Shirley tune there, Barry? Perfect. Perfect tune. <laughs> do you remember where they were on their way to as they were singing that song, Skipping Down the Road? Oh, uh, yeah, they were on their way to work. That's right. At the, bre at the brewery. At the brewery. That's right. All right. We, well, we do have right here on the Out and About show, this is WDDR 89.7, and, of course, 91.9 in Lawrenceville, and 90.5 up there in Easton, WDDRFM.org on the web, and 609-397-1620, extension 5 for the phone number. We have radio activist and now a friend of Freeport. Mr. Barry Goodman, tell us about the Friend of Freeport experience. We just had Rich Cantwell tell us, and uh, you are an intricate part of that. Well, I'm just a small part of the of the of the big picture, and you know it's an incredible group of people who have come together to help the people who need help, and you know being volunteers to have people who do what they're doing day in and day out, and then the intensive labor that they do on, on Saturdays, mm -hmm. plus what they do during the week, which, you know, I don't even think Rich mentioned it when I was listening to him, on how many ongoing projects are also being worked on during the work week. Let, let me tell you something about Rich. He's a very humble guy, as you know, and Rich doesn't like to take a lot of the spotlight and a lot of the credit, but one thing I know about him is that he's a doer. And he, when he says he's going to do something, he goes out and does it. And the product of that is the the way this has whole snow, you know, this whole thing has snowballed. It went from uh, just a couple of members and people that he assembled to a pretty sizable organization now, and everyone's got like a little job now. You know? Well, it's in it's interesting how even if I have this correct, how this is now a blueprint for so many other towns and areas mm -hmm. to start their own friends of whatever. Because I know that they were involved in helping people and, and, and advising people, I think, in Lindenhurst mm -hmm. and, and even in Long Beach. And, and it's just it's a snowball where everybody is feeding off on how to accomplish the task together. Mm -hmm. And Friends of Treeport, like I said, is, a, is an incredible group of people who come together and just do what they have to do. Doing, doing our thing. We had uh, Gary Glinsky, my friend uh, and former bandmate, uh, a bass player that I played with. We had him on. He's a Staten Island guy, and he was doing something very, very similar just days after the storm, if you recall. I know Barry listens to the show, and I know you remember when I had Gary on the show. Yes, I do. Um, he was bringing, you know, station wagons full of uh, supplies to people, and it got to the point where people were seeking him out, and merchants were seeking him out, car dealerships and friends and people's, you know, jobs where they were getting their bosses involved and he was overflowing his car to the point where they had to get a few other vehicles and in a lot of ways that's how Rich um, you know got the group started but again and 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 the 
thing about Freeport that I, I, I think we've painted this picture before because we've had the uh, the Freeport crew on after the hurricane, et cetera, and so many of my friends are, are Freeporters like you. You live in Pennsylvania now, but you're a Freeporter. And everyone just kind of, you know, pulls together. I know, Jay, you were saying that happened in your neighborhood, too. Well, it did. And you know what it makes me think of, Bar and uh, Manny? Mm -hmm. We have everybody right now pitching in and, and, and right after the storm and during the storm, mm -hmm. pitching in and helping everybody out, right? Right. But right now, we have an epidemic in not only the United States, but worldwide. Mm -hmm. And it's hunger. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that go to sleep at night mm -hmm. that are hungry. Mm -hmm. And we know from our gross domestic product and from things that are grown around the world that we actually can feed everybody in the world right now. I believe that. So then why is it that we need a catastrophe to help people with their homes and this. I heard a talk yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was at a meeting yesterday from 9.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. until 11.15 in the morning, right? And one of the points that the speaker brought out was, we can feed everyone in this world. It's just a matter of actually doing it. We don't just do it. Now, how come after, after this catastrophe could happen, people in Keyport, people on, in Freeport, people all over the place, Long Beach Island, everything. How come everybody can pull together and help everybody get back in their house and this, that, and the other thing, but we can't put an end to world hunger? Well, well, to tell you the truth, Jay, you know, that's a discussion, a, a long, that could be a whole two-hour discussion Easily. on the Out and About show, but, you know, to put it into real quick... Layman's terms? Put it in layman's terms. Yeah. Back. It seems that, it seems like it takes a catastrophe for people to wake up and go, wow, wow, this could happen to me. And until it happens that way, people just to go about and do their things. And that's just the way, that's just human nature. It's an unfortunate thing, but that's just the way we work. It takes a catastrophe for people to wake up and go, wow. And I think even last week when we were, when, last week or two weeks ago, when I was on the show, remember I mentioned that people think that everything is over, that everything's done, everything's fixed. Right. And I know I people in my neighborhood don't think I, that. I, remember I well, yeah, sure. that 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 New Orleans from Katrina is still, still not up is to still part. not back to what it was. Agreed. That there's still plenty to do there. And it's the same with all the victims of Superstorm Sandy. Absolutely. And just, um, now Barry, did you uh, were you able to listen to Rich's uh, segment? Yes, I did. Because one of the things that I really um, give all of you guys kudos to is the fact that, you know, this has now become a 501c3. He's been given grant money from the Robin Hood folks. You know, not he, but I'm saying the organization. And now it puts you in a position. By the way, Manny, among, yeah. among others, too, there have been individuals who, who have donated to right. this just charity. It's well, not just Robin Hood. That's absolutely right. correct. Plenty of free quarters who have, who have kicked money in. That's correct. Okay. Yes. And uh, and the thing is, I find fascinating is that, you know, it went from, hey, let's just, you know, assemble a bunch of guys and go and fix, you know, a few houses and help some folks, to now he's got some, you know, uh, and the folks that are on the board have some pretty major responsibilities. <laughs> you got to watch again, what you're doing. Again, there's some amazing volunteers who have, who, are, who, do, who do carpentry work and, and masonry work and plumbing and all these other tradesman-type jobs as a professional who come and don't their time whenever they can and whenever they're needed. All right, Barry, you know what? We're going to do a couple of messages. Stay on the line because we got to talk beef stew when we get back. All right. All right. Hey, everyone, this is Bill Kalki inviting you to wake up every Tuesday morning from 6 to 9 a.m. in the Hotel California. We'll start off in Graham's room with a pair of Graham Parsons songs. Enjoy a breakfast burrito or two, and at 7.30, deliver room service, where a listener orders up three songs with a common theme. So take a trip down that desert highway with a cool wind in your hair, and check out the Hotel California. You may never want to leave. That's Tuesday mornings, 6 to 9 a.m., on the home of Diversified Radio, WDVR-FM. the dance records from the early days of rock and roll? Remember the gang getting together at someone's house? 
stacking up some 45s in the old record player and dancing the night away? Oh, no, man. Nice. Remember that sock hop prom night, the driving burger joints and do Rock street corner harmony? Every time we play on Memories and More, we'll lead you back to the memories of the friends, sweethearts, places, and time from the 50s and 60s. Here at WDR's Memories and More, Tuesdays, noon until 3. Oh, yes. Yeah. Was that Elvis Presley? Prior to the Munsters? Prior to the Munsters. Was that Elvis Presley ending off? In some that would have been the Elvis Presley era. My mother used to date Elvis Presley. Your mother dated Elvis Presley? Absolutely. Barry? Tell us about your Jay, feeling on, the, on that. Jay, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 I, I, I see letters. From Elvis Presley to my mother. Those letters, you should present them to the uh, the porn shop guys on uh, TV. That, uh, that no, wait, wait, that, that's P A P A W N. Yes, porn, porn brokers. Porn brokers. But my mother would oh, never let those go. And so are you, Barry. So you can't tell that <laughs> Barry, we're going to talk beef stew with you now. You have been, uh, you know, telling us about this uh, gourmet recipe. It's a Parisian peasant beef it's stew. Out, and it's Alsatian. Okay, and, and so tell us about this beef stew, because you know what, I was kind of like, kind of laughing it off, oh yeah, Barry's going to make beef stew, but guess what, he fed 30 people, and every one of them loved it, and they said it was the best beef stew they ever had. Really? Well, during during my days of of uh, having extra things to, not having extra things to do at night, I decided to take a cooking class with an Alsatian chef. Mm -hmm. The Alsatian recipe is the mountains of France, where it's basically, you have peasants, farms, you, you now have a lot of wineries, but still there are those farms up there that everything is right off the farm. And if they, one of the things about these uh, peasant people from the Alsatian region is that, of course, they, they also have uh, uh, meat that they take to the market, but they want to get the most money for the meat, so it's only the best cuts, which leaves them with the worst cuts. But the Alsatian people, and have learned to take the worst cuts of meat and by cooking it a certain way becomes the best tasting. Wow. And that's what I did here. Um, I had this one recipe that this that was taught to me many, many years ago, and every once in a while I, I make it, and it, it is what it is. It's, it, do you want me to go through the recipe? No, you still no, have to stew to. down some beef is what he's saying. He, he, he made a stew beef. What did you put in this stew beef? I made a beef stew, but I made it from the worst cuts of meat. Okay, so what did you put in it? Necessarily, people wouldn't think to, to buy or to cook with, or if they do, it's people like myself who say, I know how to take care of that meat, and or they, they have a process that they know how to cook. These what these people did and, and how they take the worst cuts of meat and make it good is they have a braising technique hmm. where they braise the meat and then it can be slow cooked so it becomes so tender it just flakes apart. Wow. Did you happen to put a little jira or masala in that beef? No, actually, actually this recipe calls for uh, a red wine and I would only use a regional red wine from the Alsatian region which is a Pinot Noir. Mm, wow. And in that, in that, in those big pots that I brought last Saturday, was probably five bottles of Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. So uh, let's get this one thing straight, though: the friends of Freeport are not drinking wine on the job. No, no, no. <laughs> the alcohol, the alcohol, of course, uh, of course, just you know, cooks off, and you're left with just the flavoring of the grapes from that region. Those sure. regional grapes. Do a reduction. Uh, it was so good to me. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what, going back to what the Friends of Report are up to since we had Rich on earlier, and, um, you know, now that you've been involved with them for, you know, a couple of months now on Saturdays. No, no, no actually, actually, Manny, mm -hmm. I've been involved with them physically for a month. About a month. Okay, because I know that, you know, I'm in contact with you, and I know you go every Saturday. What is, uh, what's a Saturday like? You get there at a particular time, and by the way, uh, Rich found it uh, interesting that you beat him to the job site, and you're coming from... Uh, over 
100 miles away. A hundred, over 120 miles to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> but then you know what time I get up, don't you? I do know because I do the same thing. I'm out right, right. You you have have to really we have to be. We we have to be. I get there between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. The job, wherever we are assigned to, we start the job at 9 o'clock. Now, a lot of times there are still those houses that need what they call the rip out, which means that the... Um, the sheetrock has been, has been, was wet from the flooding. And what has happened also is that you have the growth of mold sure. that has now started on the sheetrock. Now, with, most importantly in a lot of these houses, the sheetrock has to be removed. Okay, you have to get that bare wood. And then, of course, if people have any kind of flooring done, the flooring needs to be done. Oh, it's got to come out, everything. Everything has to be co uh, come out until you have bare wood on the walls. Mm. Uh, and th there were many houses, and I think you can appreciate this, Manny. How about the houses that were built back in the 1930s that you, are know, that you know are lath and plaster? Hey, you know what? I know those homes very, very well. So all, I, that, I know those all homes. that lath has to be pulled down also. And I know the task of what that is. And you guys... Let me tell you, you've risen to the occasion and you've made a task that would be monumental for some of these folks who just don't have the wherewithal or the coverage, and you come in with an army and you handle it for them. And that's what it is. It's an army. It's an army of people who go there and they do whatever is needed to be done to get the house into a condition that the rebuilding process can start. And that's other houses that we've gone to in the process where you go back in. Now that the house has been maybe had mold arrestors uh, uh, adhere to them, or you know, that type of situation, whatever they did to be able to now go back and put in insulation mm -hmm. and sheetrock. Well, you know what? We've discussed the Friends of Freeport. We talked a little bit about beef stew. There is no conversation with Barry Goodman. Barry, grateful jester Goodman that is not complete without discussing radio activism. And, uh, you know, we do have an upcoming fundraising uh, uh, drive coming up here on WDDR, all of us, all the volunteers. Tell us your thoughts, uh, Barry, because I know that you're very passionate about uh, community radio and listener-supported radio. Tell us why you support um, listener-supported radio. Uh well, you just, because it's listener supported, which means that you have to have listeners who want to listen to your radio station. And what the, usually, depending upon the format, the last thing the listener wants to hear is a commercial after every song played or every segment or whatever. It's, it's more of getting in tune and understanding that the community radio station is there for the community and those who might be on the outside of the community but can listen to it via streaming web and you just enjoy it and it's cleaner, it's fresher, it's nicer and it makes you feel like you're a part of a community without actually having to be there. Well, well said. Our right. community actually have, has expanded, Barry. Do you know how our, our community has expanded? Yeah, you look at look at WDVR. It was just that area down in that area of New Jersey. Now you have people all the way up into Pennsylvania who can now appreciate a community radio station. Not only that, but we have people in Georgia, in Florida. I'm listening to this. We now have listeners. I have my cousin Megan and her mom, my aunt, listening in Trinidad and Tobago right now. Shout out to my cousin Megan and my aunt. That's terrific. Barry, uh, stay on the line because uh, we want you to be a part of this. First of all, the uh, show is kind of uh, coming up to an end here now because we're going to give way to the great Backstory Show with, of course, Bruce and Joan. They will have a great guest. They had, a, can I tell you something, a great show last week on the Gage on the Market show. I loved it. They were talking about uh, house uh, spirituality because uh, a house and a space has its own spirituality, and I really enjoyed their show. So keep it right here for the Backstory show and of course that's going to be until six o'clock when the lowdown starts and that's between six and seven maybe they'll talk a little bit about the kids choice awards who knows but uh, I'm sure they'll have a great interview at seven o'clock it's Monday night soiree with our friend Tommy J and that goes till 10 and it's bluegrass with Mike but uh, Barry real quick before we uh, sign off the air uh, Jay wanted to tell us a little bit about um, you know you had this uh, this little thing that you wanted to tell us about folks that uh, are always revolving well, around yeah. problems. Here, here's what I wanted to discuss. Um, I read a magazine yesterday, and that the, the, the magazine 
threw out and gave me a couple of epiphanies, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, you know and I know, we all know um, what's wrong with about continually worrying about the past. Do you think there's a problem with that? Absolutely. I mean, everybody does it, right? Dwelling about problem. the past, right? Right, Barry? Of course. Okay, so many people worry. To worry continually means to plague oneself, vex oneself, mm. or persecute oneself. It causes great anxiety. Does worrying solve any problem? No, it doesn't solve one. Imagine trying to move forward by rocking for hours in a rocking chair, expending all the time, energy, but getting nowhere. You're in a rocking chair. You're not going anywhere. Instead of worrying, some positive action on your part may produce good results. Now, these results might be, or you might want to think of, uh, maybe um, instead of worrying, you can apologize to the person that you might have wronged, or perhaps uh, restoring a good relationship, Mm -hmm. or you can avoid whatever led up to that wrong act, thereby preventing future problems. then again, you may simply have to live through some situations in life. Just live through it. Forget about it. And learn. And right, because worrying is nothing but a form of paral- paralysis that can leave one unable to do the things that they have to do. So one, one of my last points was um, what our resolve should be uh, regarding your past, present, and future and, and, and future. Mm-hmm. And basically, um, rather than fretting over our past or dwelling on what cannot be undone, we should stretch forward to what lies ahead. We may not literally forget our past mistakes, but we need not constantly berate ourselves for what we've done. We should strive to put the past behind us. Excellent point. We've what do you that think? Back. What do you think about that, Barry? Uh, I, I have a couple of thoughts there. Please. Number one, amen. What do you mean, amen? amen. You like it. You like what you said. Oh, okay. I got a, I got a kudos from there. Uh, no, number two <laughs> is this is why in the world we have psychologists and psychiatrists. And for those who don't want to try to get through what their mental anguish is, they're going to miss out a lot of what's going forward in life. So true, Barry. And you know what? With that, we've uh, basically come to the end of Maybe. another installation of Maybe. the Out and About Show. Yes, Barry. Before before you close, can yeah. I just give a special shout out to Christine's making brisket for the past over tonight? Christine A. <laughs> yes. Uh, she's so nice and uh, I think I was like communicating on, with her on the, uh, was it the uh, Friends of Report page? Yes, and also on the cookbook page. Oh, that's so nice. Christine, big shout out to you. Have a great brisket. Uh, let's do a quick shout out also to Shari, who I contemplated on having on the show today, but I knew I wasn't going to have enough time because I know she probably covered that Kids' Choice Awards over the weekend. And also, Manny, for all those who are celebrating Passover. A happy and a joyous Passover. Fantastic and well said. Thank you. And a very joyous Passover to you, Mr. Barry Grateful Jester Goodman. Thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. Thank you, Jay. We will be speaking to you, Barry, very shortly because we have fundraising coming up, and I definitely am going to count on you. Don't forget about April 1st. April 1st? That's April Fool's Day. That's April Fool's Day. April 1st is the first Monday of of the month. And And you know what that means. Tell me. With me. You're coming in? I'm coming in. Oh, you're coming in this Monday then. <laughs> oh, I um, can't wait. See, that's news to me then. It, well, Manny, <laughs> you have to be our only Facebook page. You know what? I'm a very busy guy. You know what time I leave the house in the morning and I <laughs> have other responsibilities. You let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry, thank you. You're a generous soul. Thank, thank you. Guys. We'll look forward to what the format do you have for us next month? I, I, I haven't really decided, but we'll post it. All right. So he's kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've come down with Frank Sinatra already, which was a great format. You did, uh, what else did you do? You did a lot of doo stuff with the Dick yeah, Clark. We did, yeah. we, did, we did Grateful Dead. We did, um, we did some back Background of uh, Dick Clark and all, all the people that were made famous. Wow. Well, you're the best, Barry. Thank you very much. We'll look Thank forward to hanging with you and next Barry, week. Barry, have a fantastic week.
And everybody should be staying tuned right here as we go out with the Miami Vice theme song. And the reason I put Miami Vice on is because what were they, Jay? They were sharp dressers, weren't they? Rocky and Tubbs, like Manny and Jay. Weren't they sharp dressers, though? Absolutely. Guess who's the sharpest dresser I know? Who? Oh. Mr. Bruce Gage. Ah, you're right. I just saw him. That's right. Up. Bruce Gage always looks good. He always looks like a million bucks. He's going to have a great show. Him and Joan Vanderveen will be next with the Backstory Show right here on WDBRFM 89. 9.7. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week, and have a fantastic day. Yeah!